Isn't it great to be able to help the birds through the winter with these bird feeders? We all want the birds to be healthy and happy because it'll be hunting season before you know it. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> but you know, this year we've had the worst winter we've had in a while. I'm just afraid that normal bird seed won't do the job. <laughs> they need food that'll help them generate a little extra heat in those tiny bodies. And that's why I've mixed up this batch of jalapenos and chili peppers and extra, extra hot sauce to give this bird seed a little goose in the horsepower department. I think it's going to be a little warmer in the nest tonight. their annual masquerade picnic. You know, that's, that's a big deal. It used to be just a normal picnic. They had the potluck supper in there, but they had so many food poisoning claims <laughs> that now everybody wears a costume to protect the guilty. <laughs> Speaking of protecting the guilty, <laughs> so uh, what's up, Mike? I'm not Mike. Oh, really? No. I'm an interesting stranger from a faraway town. Oh. There's no one named Mike living in the place of which I speak. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> what? You gotta help me, Mr. Green. Oh. About ten years ago, I ratted on this guy named Big Al Finkelman. Yeah. I sent him up to the slammer, and I heard yesterday he just got out and he's coming to get me and pay me back. What am I gonna do? You know, maybe you're not Mike. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm Mike. I am Mike. You have a look. Dalton Humphrey. <laughs> yeah, you're Mike, all right. <laughs> look, Mike, here's all you gotta do. Tomorrow's the masquerade picnic, right? So go out and get yourself a decent costume. You'll blend right in. This big Al guy will never find you. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm gonna go right over to that costume store. Right. How late are they open? Oh, don't worry about it. There'll be somebody there till 6. Okay, I'll wait. <laughs> Possum Lodge Word Game! Yeah! <laughs> and tonight's lucky winner will receive this striking fluorescent bicycle handle grip. <laughs> Ideal for hitchhiking at night. Okay, close your ears. Reg, you got 30 seconds to get Harold to say this word. Power! Power! <laughs> Okay, Harold, what's the most important thing on a car? Cup holders. No, no this, this is a performance thing. <laughs> Reclining seats? No. Okay, look, when I stomp down on the possum van gas pedal, it gives me lots of... Fumes. <laughs> it does. Okay, we have to move something like a, like a piano. We always put Moose Thompson on the heavy end because he has more... Insurance. <laughs> Okay, Harold, when you're dancing with a beautiful girl, okay, you got her in your arms, eh? Suddenly, both of you feel the something of love. What? No, no. No, 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 no. Time's almost up. Yeah, no, no. You know what, Harold, I think, I think we're scuppered here. No, 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 yeah. don't give up! Don't give up! Just use the power of positive thinking! That was... Oh. State-of-the-art wastewater removal vehicle, $95,000. Hard hat, $20. Trademark, $14.95. Heading home with clean boots after four pump-outs and an overflow? Priceless. For city folks, there's Public Works. For everyone else, there's Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services. Some men are so competitive, even with dumb things like barbecue grills. 
They get those big units with the extra side burners and the rotisserie and the wet bar. Well, let's show them a thing or two, huh? <laughs> Here's a way to build your own mega grill using something everybody has right in their own backyard. A previously enjoyed automobile. Oh, sure, you have to make a few alterations to the vehicle. But you know, the truly worthwhile things in life are always worth a little extra effort. Now, first you want to take off the spark plugs, but leave them hooked up to the ignition wire. And then you want to disconnect the fuel line from the carburetor. Now, you got to take the engine out of her. Shouldn't be that hard. Especially if the vehicle's been sitting there for a while. Okay, you mount the fuel line on the top there, and then you run your spark plugs up through the side of the unit, and then you put the whole deal down into the cavity where the engine used to be. Kind of like a heart transplant. <laughs> Although I believe with a heart transplant, they clean the shoes off first. <laughs> All right. Now we need something to use as a grill. How about the grill? Okay, I think we're all ready to start barbecuing here. First thing you want to do, pump the gas a few times, soak the charcoal. Now you just start her up. Okay, we're all set to grill up some delicious steaks. You know, if salad is so good for you, how come you can't barbecue it? Can you ask me that? I didn't think so. So here I am, sitting in my deluxe barbecue grill, out of the rain, sitting in plush comfort, got the FM AM stereo if I so choose. What's that you say? How do I add my favorite steak sauce? Well, hey, isn't that what windshield washers are for? <laughs> and just spread it around with the wiper. Just that easy. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. This isn't a barbecue, it's a carbecue. It gets over 50 meals to a gallon. <laughs> Even more if I goose it. When you're hit with an aroma that buckles your knees, when your property smells like prehistoric cheese. Call us, we'll handle the problem with ease before your neighbors keel over with each passing breeze. Well, everybody's all dressed up for the masquerade picnic thing. Most of them are monsters and animals, and actually that was before they even put the costumes on. Hey, Red, huh? <laughs> Do you recognize us? Why, sure. It's uh, Curly, Larry, and Mike. Ah, <laughs> oh, gee. If I can't fool you, I can't fool anybody. Big Al's gonna come and he's gonna find me and he's gonna kill me. Boy, you're gonna lose the deposit on your costume. Yeah, I got an idea. Why don't you dress up as a woman? That'll fool him. Well, that's kind of risky. He's been in prison for 10 years. <laughs> you know what, Mike? If Big Al came through that door right now, what would you do? I'd probably soil myself. You'd lose the deposit on your costume. And I'd run. Exactly. And that's how we can hide. See, we'll get everybody to run with you, and they'll get, you'll get lost in the shuffle there. Before we have the picnic, we'll have a masquerade marathon, huh? <laughs> kind of like the Boston Marathon. Yeah, except we won't go 26 miles. And it won't be in Boston, right? <laughs> What about a prize? You're going to need to offer some kind of prize, huh? Well, I think that's Mike's responsibility. I mean, we're doing this for him, so I think he's got to offer the prize. Uh, okay, uh, uh, the winner gets to choose his own prize, right, as good. long as it's available locally and it can be carried by one person. <laughs> Welcome to the experts portion of the show, where we address those three little words men find so hard to say. I don't know. Those are the words. Oh, today's letter's from a lady. Dear experts, my husband is a total embarrassment. Well, that could have been written by every woman I know. <laughs> Especially when he eats. He picks his teeth, puts his elbows on the table, and makes rude noises. It's gotten so bad, I don't even want to go out to expensive restaurants with him anymore. I wish I'd thought of that. <laughs> oh, boy, I, I just hate dining out. You know, there's so many little rules of etiquette to remember. Oh, Dalton, it's simple. 
You, you just start with the smaller cutlery on the outside and work your way in. What do you mean? You see, Dalton's used to cutlery that comes in a plastic bag with a moist towelette. Well, you know what the problem is, don't you? This town doesn't have enough fine dining establishments. That's why I'm thinking about opening up my own, eh? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Winston's Hideaway. Oh. You know, for people like me. Oh, yeah. Lonely sewage suckers with no chance for romance. <laughs> kind of picturing a lot of tables for one there, Winston. No, no, no. If, if someone comes in alone, I, I would just seat them with another eligible single. Oh. You know, kind of a dating service slash restaurant thing. Sounds more like a bad idea slash lawsuit thing. <laughs> No, I'll, I'll tell you what this lady needs to do is just, uh, she needs to be able to ignore her husband. Go, go to a restaurant where they have real low lights and loud music, you know. If she can't see him and can't hear him, she's probably going to get along with him a lot. Or better yet, better yet, you know what, just stay home. That's what, that, that, that's what Bernice and I do. And Bernice is able to ignore all your faults? Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. She's sitting at one end of the table in the dining room and I'm lying on the couch in the living room. <laughs> We have this thing we do every year. We try to see who can be the fastest coming down the big hill. We set up a clock and we set her on 12. You see the mark there, the 23 second mark, that is the world record for coming down our hill. So we set it and I stop the clock right on the 12, then I hang a paint can on there and all you gotta do is knock the paint can off, that starts the clock and then we try to get down the hill and hit the timer and pulls her to stop and well, you'll see how what I mean in a second. So I wanna take the first round and get up on the toboggan, Dalton, I tell Dalton, go ahead Dalton, I'm ready to go. So he whips the snowball all the way down the hill, knocks the can off and that starts the clock and down she comes. So I'm doing pretty good there. I believe, I think there's a rock somewhere, there it is, yep, don't miss that. And we're coming around. looking good, looking good, looking good. And, oh, I like this baby. Oh, beautiful. Now I go check my time? No, sir, that's about 37. I'm a good 14 seconds off the record. Now the thing with tobogganing, for those of you who've done it, you know that the more weight you have on the toboggan, generally the faster she'll go. So I'm figuring I'm gonna add a bit more weight now. Unfortunately, Winston was with us and nobody wanted him in front of them, so we gotta kinda keep shoveling him back. No, no, back you go, Winston, get back. You don't wanna be downwind from Winston, that's for sure. Now get back you go, Winston, okay. So we put Winston on the back there. Now he's single Dalton. Okay, Dalton, we're ready to rip. Fire away and, uh... well, that was unfortunate. <laughs> Okay, we'll go without Winston then. All right, and uh, try her again. I think the three of us, we're gonna make a difference. And away we go, down we go, and I'm feeling pretty good. I can feel the extra speed already, and uh, is this enough weight, do we think, to break the world record? Uh, we'll soon find out. Check it, no. Well, we, we gained some, but no, not yet. So we need to do something that adds even more weight yet, and we got a great idea. <laughs> Okay, and even Dalton can go with us on this one because he can sit right up on top of the picnic table and uh, fire away, Dalton. And we're just off like a rocket down the hill. Unbelievable. Look out for the rock and then and watch it. Man. Well, I think we're looking good. We're looking good. Oh. Okay, guys, I know you're hurting, but here's the good news. We're now the world champs. Hi everybody, Ranger Gord here. You know, in tonight's educational film, which of course I wrote and directed and, well, I did all the voices and drew all the pictures and, uh, well, I choreographed most of the love scenes. <laughs> tonight's episode is all about teaching you how to talk to the animals. I like to call this episode Ranger Doolittle, which is of course just a catchy name for this film and not any kind of an indication of what I do up here on a regular basis, okay? <laughs> Really, it's not. <laughs> so, anyway, that's the end of the introduction portion of the presentation. Now we move on to the next portion of the presentation, which is, of course, the middle part of the presentation, which comes right after the introduction and, of course, just before the uh, ending. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Well, folks, today I'm going to show everyone in our solar system that I can talk to the animals. Oh, that's awesome, Ranger Gord. <laughs> yes, it is, Harold. Have either of you ever talked to animals? Hmm? Uh, I haven't personally, no. No. I speak to a jackass every once in a while, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
you can see, animals don't appreciate that kind of humor. This is a moose, Harold. Why don't you try talking to it? Oh, all right. Ah, uh, hello. Uh, my name is Harold. What's your name? <laughs> I think maybe you're getting just a little too personal, Harold. I think Harold's in real trouble here. Moose are vegetarian. Wongo, wongo, dingy dingy. Thank you, Ranger Corps. Huh? What did you say to him? I said, Unga, Wonga, Dingy Ding. Uh, and what does that mean? Huh? Exactly? No idea, Harold. Just because I speak moose doesn't mean I understand it. <laughs> Let's go, Harold. No, hang on a minute. Let's see if I can get that moose back here to apologize. Yo, okay, Puzza. That's a duck. Close enough. Try to say something. Ah, uh, no thanks, no. Oh, come on, you can do it. Ah, uh, no thanks, Gord. I uh, don't want people to see me talking to a duck. You're a snob, you know that, Red? <laughs> All right, I'll uh, give it a shot here. Uh, so, duck, how would you describe Ranger Gord? Quack! <laughs> If your ground seems unusually soft, if each time you breathe, you let out a cough, if the cows roll their eyes and barf in the trough, you better call Rothschilds before the lid blows off. You know what really fries my bacon? When I'm cruising along the highway and car after car comes up behind me and swerves over the line to pass. To me, it's an insult. Like I'm just going slow for spite or something. Anyone who knows me can tell you I'd go faster if I could. If only there was a way to stop them from passing me. Well, there is. Now, you're thinking I'm gonna maybe switch to jet fuel or supercharge the engine or maybe build some kind of a flamethrower into the back of the van? And while those are great ideas, I'm going with something that captures my trademark creative subtlety. I'm gonna build a giant ballpoint pen. All right, now, all you need is one of these uh, safety pylons. I found this one just up the road. Okay, then you just uh, get a hard ball and you drop that in there. That's the ball with your ballpoint pen. You've already got the point, which is to stop people from passing you. Okay, now to hold the ball in place, you need a big spring. This here is a coil spring off a car. You can find those beside any pothole. And then to hold the whole assembly in place, you want to attach a few paint cans, one on top of the other, and then uh, punch a hole in the bottom of each one. I'll explain a little bit more about that later. Attach them all together there with the handyman secret weapon, duct tape. Now all we do is add the ink, which in this case is paint. These paint cans actually were empty, so I, I had to add paint to them, and it just so happens it's the exact same color as the stuff they used to paint the highway lines. Hey, there's a coincidence, huh? <laughs> all right. Let's go and see if the pen is mightier than the tailgater. Remember now, no passing on the solid line. Well, the masquerade marathon is off and running. Weird to see people in animal costumes running through town. Looks like fire drill at Disney World. <laughs> they, they started off early for, for some reason. I couldn't figure I guess they took a look at the condition of the athletes and decided to allow a little more time for it. Or hey, Red. Yeah. Looks like Mike's going to win the marathon. Uh -huh. you, you, you not in it, Dalton? Oh, no, no. I got the... Oh, I just got the bad back. <laughs> yeah, well, your front's no treat either. You know? <laughs> Tell me something, how, how come they started early? Oh, Big Al showed up. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, Mike started running. Everyone thought the race had started. Oh, and, oh geez, Mike was really motoring. <laughs> really? Well, I can't believe he could run in that Matador costume. No, 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 he didn't. He came up with a whole different outfit. Really? Yeah.
I won. Congratulations. <laughs> Meeting time. Yeah, you guys go ahead. I'll be down in a minute, eh? Oh, I, I forgot to tell you, Mr. Green. I think Big Al might have followed me here. What's up, Mike? No, 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 no. I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm red green, and uh, this is my. This is my. This, I can't show you my driver's license here. My, well, my, my my wallet's gone. So Mike was here. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? He just left. Oh. Yeah. Uh, if my wife is watching, uh, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. And watch out for some guy dressed like me. He's an ex-con. He's trying to sub in on my conjugal visit. <laughs> the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Hey, Marcus, Marcus, Marcus. Get out. All right, then, uh, I'll buy your head for a uh, men's prayer. I'm a man, but I can change if I have to, I guess. Hey, men, uh, has anybody seen Big Al's car keys? Oh, right. 